Welcome to True Love is Worth Waiting For. This is a program designed to share the true love stories of married couples and also to show the amazing things that God can do in our lives when we give our lives, all our lives, even our love story to Him. In Psalm 37, 4 and 5 it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Truly God knows what is best for our lives, whether that is the gift of singleness or the gift of marriage. So rather than trying to orchestrate our lives after our own plans or work out our love story after our own dreams, our task is really rather simple, and that is to commit our ways unto the Lord, to trust in Him, to delight ourselves in Him. Today we hope you'll be encouraged as we share the story of one young couple and how God fulfilled the desires of their heart even beyond their wildest dreams. So, what did make Marianne stand out to me at the very beginning? It had to be by far her face. Her eyes and face just had a radiant energy full of vibrancy and life that are hard to describe with words. Right as soon as I met her, I could tell that she just had a radiant in, inner peace and a true inner joy at, that came from her love for the Lord. When I went and saw her at the church she was a part of and how involved she was with the music, with, uh, with the song service, uh, I could just tell that this energy that she portrayed was completely real and a part of her that was not fake. It was just who she was. What I love about teaching most is, well, do you have an hour? <laughs> okay. So it was like the day I met TJ, he was tall. He was handsome, he was good looking, and I remember the number one thing my dad always told me was, Marianne, make sure you find a man who is kind. Above all else, make sure he is kind. So I would watch TJ, how did he treat his friends, even his mom, his family, everybody. So I wanted to see what kind of guy he was. And he truly is so kind, so gentle, so sweet, so patient, all these things that these are the qualities that I know my dad would totally approve of and that I would love and appreciate my whole life. So being a godly man, being so friendly and fun, he's adventurous, gung-ho, willing to go for runs in the rain. That's what one of the things I love about him the most, and then his kind heart. I grew up in Southern California my entire life, born in Loma Linda, raised mostly in San Diego, California. I have a wonderful Christian family, of which my mom, dad, and two brothers are a part of. I grew up loving to do almost anything that involved the great out of doors and sports. Surfing is probably where you would find me most often during my early years. And I did my undergraduate college training out in Tennessee, which led me to where I am now, a third year medical student at Loma Linda University School of Medicine. And I am pursuing a career as an ER physician. I was fortunate in that I was raised in a wonderful Christian family who centered the family on the Bible and God and prayer and church. I truly remember becoming a Christian for myself, my own understanding, probably in the middle of my high school years, but I feel very fortunate in that I have known about the Lord ever since I can remember. Well, my family is completely amazing. I think I have the best family on the planet Earth, but um, my dad was a pastor, so we grew up moving about every five, six years, and lots of high energy, enthusiasm for the Lord. The church was our life. There were four of us kids, and we would have so much fun, older brother, two sisters. And my brother took good care of his sisters, made sure we were outdoor enthusiasts and could 
keep up with the boys type of thing. So my parents also really loved getting out into um, nature, felt like it was God's main teaching grounds for us to learn from. My family is, of course, always very active in the church, and so that was my life, growing up that way. And um, God was always very real for me, to me as a little girl, because of the love and the joy that my parents radiated. How did I meet my wife? It was really neat. We were at a a volleyball captain's meeting, getting ready to do volleyball intramurals. From which, we found out that we had a mutual friend down in San Diego who was a beach bum like myself. And we hit it off. It was so cool. And this led to uh, probably a 45 minute conversation. And out of the blue, he asked me to be on his volleyball team. Here we've never played volleyball before. It was a pretty uh, off the cuff question, I suppose. So that's kind of how we hit it off, and from there on, we we won the volleyball championship together, and we continued to just spend a lot of good quality time together, hanging out in groups as friends, getting to know each other, which was very important to me. And after that, many conversations where we got to know each other better, sharing bowls of cereal. Uh, peanut butter and jam on bread uh, was probably where we got to know about each other the initial first couple weeks of our time together. Friendship took off from there. And then came Thanksgiving break and my plans unfortunately fell through. Her roommate, who she lived with at the time, had invited her to go down with her friend, with her family to Georgia. My, my plans fell through and like the day before Thanksgiving break, TJ, he says, hey, by the way, what are you, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? She said, oh man, I was gonna go down to Georgia with my roommate, but she just, it just fell through just yesterday. So I don't have any plans at the moment. And he said, well, why don't you come with me to my aunt's place in North Carolina? She graciously accepted the offer. Got to meet more of his family at that time, his parents who are fantastic. This was another opportunity to get to know her in this context of family and friends. And I think God has a hand in these things. <laughs> this was just a providential leading, I, I believe. From there, we came back and we had about a month left of a school before the semester ended. I decided to bail on my family for Christmas plans as well. She came out to California. We spent four fun days up at Mammoth, tearing down the mountain. I was a snowboarder, he was a skier. That we welcomed in the new year. And then the next day, January 2, turned out to be my birthday incidentally, was when I Decided I'd had enough. But he grabs my hand, marches me out to the living room. And sat her down on the sofa one evening. And he says, Marianne. What do I have to do to make you mine? Oh my goodness. <laughs> we had had a conversation about her principles of courting before. I told him what he would have to do to get me. It was a little weird, I think, and different for him. This was a brand new concept to me. My dad and I had made this agreement, this pact, totally my choice, and I told TJ about it. I said, you don't have to do this. This is the way that I've decided to do things. You can take it or leave it, but um, if you are interested in dating me, you'll have to call it my dad. To which my shaking knees said, fine, I'll do it. Let's call him right now. He actually worked up the courage and called him that night. So while she was visiting with my family, I called up her family. Mind you, I had never met them before. For like 45 minutes, <laughs> they are yakking on the phone. I had never done anything like this before. I'm like sitting there, what are they talking about? And, 
and 45 minutes later, I guess you could say we knew quite a bit about each other. We had an awesome conversation. And uh, he told me, oh yeah, by the way, you know, go ahead. Uh, we give you our complete blessing to go ahead and take your relationship with Marianne to the next level. From there on out, it, it was just dynamite. One of, one of the biggest ways that I saw God leading in our relationship was the support of everybody in our relationship, all of our friends and family, you know, people who are spiritual, to me, it was essential that I have all of my loved ones and especially my family saying, two thumbs up, it's a go. You know, I was old enough, I was, I felt like I was more mature and at the point where I was ready to enter into a serious relationship, I wasn't really interested in dating before that because I knew what I wanted and I didn't want to waste some other guy's time. And so every, with everybody kind of pushing us together and of course TJ fulfilling all of the requirements, so to speak, the essentials that I had written on a list saying, okay God, these are things I really no, you would want me to have in a man. And then TJ was miraculously just fulfilling each and every one of these things. He, he was the right guy. He loved the Lord so much more than anything. It just radiated out of his life. He, he was a blessing to me personally. He made me want to be a better woman. And it was totally a God thing. I mean, I checked everything off on my list of what I wanted in my man, and God gave me that and so much more. When I was getting to know Marianne and was thinking about the reasons why I might want to marry her, I thought to myself, what was the original intent God had for the marriage institution? Is it simply for two people to be together? There also is the added dimension of how will this union glorify God? Why did God make marriage? It was to show another attribute of his character and his love. And so if two people can come together, make each other better, and by their lives being together, they can show those around them a clear picture of the character of God then that is where fulfilling marriage criteria is found. Here is by far the best part of the story, my personal favorite. This was the time that I decided I was going to ask her to marry me. We flew off to Machu Picchu, Peru. We had a friend who was the director of a, of a disaster and relief organization in Peru. And so we had a mission trip slash sightseeing trip that we arranged to go together with a couple other friends in Peru. It was supposed to be a mission trip slash vacation. We were gonna to try to fit in a few fun things. We went down there and did, were able to work in some of the schools, uh, volunteer a little bit of time in some of the hospitals down in Peru. The, the last bit of the trip, we decided to go to Machu Picchu. The old Inca civilization. We got to fly out to, um, to go to Machu Picchu and flew into Cusco, 10,000 foot city, went for a few runs there, had, um, just had a wonderful time. How am I going to ask her? What am I going to do to make this the most memorable day of her life and my life? We were riding up in a tour bus that day. We somehow miraculously got the front seat of the bus, big huge windows in the front, gorgeous views. I mean, these canyon walls, mountains go straight up. About three weeks before we went to Peru, the idea came to me. So we get there and we're walking around these awesome, magnificent rooms. You know, you're at 8,000 feet up there. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to get 
a photo album. I'm going to compile all the great memories we have. So we get to the little booth that lets you go up on the trail and you can leave your backpacks there if you want. Since our families have been so important in our relationship up to this point, I thought, you know, when we're in a foreign country, I want her to know that everyone's behind this. So I got uh, little cards the size of a picture, four by six cards, and I had everyone in my family and everyone in her family write a note, uh, giving their blessing and their approval, advice, anything they wanted to give. Well, I had all the water. I was carrying it all. And TJ has this big Arcteryx backpack on too. I said, well, why don't you just leave yours? You're not really carrying anything anyways. Just leave it. Took them with me to Peru, and I put the photo album all together. He said, no, I want a picture on the top of the mountain with my backpack, because he had just gotten it and it was new. And it was on top of the mountain, just in the background of Machu Picchu. It's a peak called Huayna Picchu. And I remember thinking, oh my word, this guy's such a poser. <laughs> I brought her to the edge of a cliff with no intention of pushing her over. We, you know, we're standing on this awesome edge looking at these canyon walls that would go straight down. Nor was it to be uh, used as leverage either. It was spectacular. From this vantage point, I told her. He's like, well, why don't we just enjoy ourselves for a few minutes and we'll, we'll go back down the, the trail. And so I'm like, okay, we're sitting there. He was standing there. He comes over to me, puts his arm around me, and he says, Marianne, Margaret Trinity. Truly, for a moment like this, I have waited all my life. Now, by God's grace, I'd like to make you my wife. Oh, my goodness. I got down on one knee, and I said, Marianne, Will you marry me? Are you serious? You want to marry me? Are you serious? And I stayed on my knee for the longest five seconds of my life. He's still down on his knee looking up at me and he's like, ah, uh, you can tell me your answer now. <laughs> Before she said, yes, yes, of course I'll marry you. He then proceeds to go over to his backpack and pull out this photo album. And I brought it over to her and said, Marianne, this is how much I've been thinking about it. This is how serious I am that I want to marry you. And I open it up. It's pictures of us from the past year and a half, you know, since we've gotten together. Pressed flowers that he himself had pressed. I know it takes time to press flowers properly, but I only had three weeks. And so what I did was while she was involved in a friend's wedding, I had the day to collect flowers, put them in a phone book, and park my future brother-in-law's car on top of them for the day. Uh, it worked. I had beautifully pressed flowers in an afternoon. And then he had notes from all of our family, his grandparents, my parents, our brothers and sisters, throughout the whole album. The best day of my entire life. So it was by far the most creative thing. And it was just goo goo gaga from there on out. We just thank God every day that he brought us together.
Okay, one of the meaningful things in our relationship that we have that something visual and symbolic that TJ and I can can actually see, you know, and look at in in our bedroom. Well, is a gift that my dad gave to us. He said when we when we went on our honeymoon, he said Make sure you bring back a bunch of sand from the beaches where you'll be at because we, we went to Mexico and the beaches there. So, TJ, you brought back what? A big we Filled up a gallon, gallon. container of sand. <laughs> and he stuffs it in our luggage and we bring it back on the plane. The thing was huge. So we get back home and we finally open the gift that my dad gave us for our wedding. And it was a beautiful glass box with a little sh with a shell and a pearl inside and we open the card and we read it and it says you know sweetheart blessings on your wedding and here's this shell and this pearl and what an what an oyster does when it has little sand and irritations that get in the shell it makes a pearl out of it and so he said henceforth in your marriage and your relationship with TJ whenever you guys have frustrations or annoyances, arguments, whatever, make a pearl out of it. And that was the beautiful, beautiful message of the, of the card and the box when we looked at it. So TJ proceeds to pull out this huge thing of sand that we've gotten on our honeymoon and is filling it in into the box in the little dish that held the shell. And you remember what you said, honey? <laughs> I remember pouring in a... Oh, you remember pouring it in. Very little amount of sand. Little amount. I come out, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, put some more sand in there. We brought back all the sand and he's only using like a spoonful. And he proceeds to say, well, sweetheart, so innocently, he says, sweetheart, that's because we don't have that many frustrations yet. <laughs> and, oh, I just laughed to myself. It was pretty precious. And it's true. God's really blessed us with a love that abounds in our relationship and we get along pretty well. Well, what I would say to those who are single um, about, be about getting into relationship is really, I think, be friends first. You know, make sure you see that person in every setting from casual to formal settings. How are they at church? How are they every day of the week? What's their lifestyle like? Would it be compatible with yours? You know, do they do they enjoy being active? Do they enjoy the same things you do? And then and then it's much more real. You're you're more honest about who you are as a person. You're not always dolled up and putting on your best putting forth your best foot, which, which you should. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you're real, you are who you are, and you can tell so much more who the other person is. And probably one of the important things, especially when you're entering into a relationship which you are pursuing, uh, wanting to see if you want to marry this person is, is to enter into it with a decided mind. You need to have a purpose and a reason why you want to start this relationship. I think a lot of problems could be avoided if people would have uh, a specific purpose for wanting to be with a person. I think too often people just want to hang out and see what happens. And if you just wait to see what happens, invariably trouble is going to wait down the road because let's be honest, there's a large uh, a very hot issue right now is um, sex and marriage and the debate whether you should wait until you are married or if it does not matter. And the plain and simple truth of the matter is if you don't wait, you'll never know what it was like. What it would be like. What it would, what it would be like. <laughs> if you did. If you did. There is something that See, God designed marriage and He also designed sex and He also invented the hormones that surge through our bodies to be a wonderful, tremendous thing. It's a beautiful thing, yeah. But, but outside of the marriage covenant, it can be a lot of heartache and a lot of um, lives that are just uh, torn apart emotionally, not to mention yeah. the fact that a lot of unwanted pregnancies happen, leads to a lot of medical problems and abortions. And 
you know, even more than that, thinking about it just from the girl's perspective, I see that it's like girls want so badly to be loved nowadays, you know, especially coming from maybe even broken homes. And they want to throw themselves at a guy. I mean, so many girls would throw themselves at you. And I'm thinking, you know, every guy wants that girl. He works his tail off for her. He wants to be that knight in shining armor who goes and works and works and works for a girl. And my, my mom always had this interesting saying that provoked a lot of thought from my mind. She would say, um, I chased your father until he caught me. And so there's so many things that a girl can do to intrigue a man, you know, in a godly way, of course, but to intrigue him and to provoke his interest and to make him really want you more than anything and to, to, to encourage high standards out of your man in your relationship. You can really, really create an, a relationship that just crescendos perfectly till that wedding day. And it is dynamite. And I mean, you have to ask yourself, do you just want a little picnic thing for your wedding or do you want 4th of July fireworks? That's the difference. You know, if you want the best, you got to make it what you want it to be. It's your attitude in life. And, you know, some people might think that's boring and dull. I think it's complete bliss and awesome so if if you're willing to wait you know it will be everything and and even more so than what you dreamed of and that's that's how God is he longs to not only give us the desires of our hearts but even more than what we had ever even dreamed of and that's what we found in our relationship like every day it keeps getting better and it was worth the wait it was worth all of the all of the things you go through you're not sure how it'll work out but it was worth having you call my dad that day it was it was worth keeping god first and foremost in our relationship and uh and it, making that wedding day extra special and as a result the wedding day is a dynamite life-changing day where you move you don't ever from pre-marriage to marriage if you've waited for, you know, waited for marriage before having sex, in addition to, you know, everything else, you know, living together, uh, sharing a home, that makes, that makes it that much more of a defining moment. And so to be able to aim for that goal, it is so important to think of this before you even enter into that first relationship that is more than a friendship. And I cannot tell you how important it is to have a made up mind regarding those principles before you even enter into a relationship because someone once said you know a made up mind is the most is the most powerful is the most powerful factor. unmovable yeah, unmovable factor that you can have if you have decided that this is how it is going to be no matter what and I would also say to all the single girls you know don't be afraid to I think God has given us a, a perception with men and don't be afraid to use that God-given ability to encourage out of guys higher standards if if you're worth if you're an awesome girl they they will definitely see that and say wow she is different out of all the other million girls out there and he's gonna want you versus all the other girls who would just throw themselves at him and do anything for him so Take a higher stand and, and be that all you be all you can be and, and shoot for the best and And just know that it can be beyond your wildest dreams if you you know just imagine And we're not just saying that. It's just imagine crazy. what marriage could be, what it would be like having saved your heart and yourself for one person mm -hmm. and waiting until you have made the move and are married. Just let your mind run wild and just imagine what that could be like, the commitment and the bond that you could have together with that person, rather than having all these severed bonds with, you know, four or five other people or, or whatnot. Because it is possible and it's all what you make of it.